I've got uh, Jason Johnson, director of the Global uh, Board of the Association of Executive Search Consultants, at AESC, and Simon Bolton from Aqualis Consulting. Now we've got the numbers, and we've got a 5.2% print. Uh, that compares, uh, that's the unemployment rate at least, with uh, 26,900 new jobs uh, added in the month of May. So that is uh, looking uh, as if the Australian dollar will perhaps just ease back on that news because it is towards the upper end of expectations. Some polls had said as many as 30,000 new jobs would have been created in the month. Uh, the most bearish projection had been for a decline of 5,000. I heard that it had gone backwards. Of course, the Aussie dollar could uh, well have got a little bit of a bounce. If we bring up the intercession chart, if we can just bring that one for you, and we'll then break down the full-time and part-time component. But the headline number is that 26,900 new jobs added. The Reuters estimate was for a rise of 17,500. Full-time jobs, 36,400 versus a part-time component, which we don't yet have, but we have uh, a participation rate of 65.1, which to my reckoning is pretty much uh, no real change on that. Have you got the, uh, the dollar chart? If we can bring that one up now and just uh, get a response on currencies. Well, it has indeed uh, just jumped up. So that is, uh, let's get a reaction on that one if we can. If David's still with us, is he still with us? David Land, uh, give me some response. No, he's gone actually, so we'll just move on there. Peter Gleeson from the Charter McLeod Group is in Perth. Peter, your view on that spike on the Aussie dollar? Yeah, I think it's uh, interesting that the number is as high as we thought. I think it is at the top end, uh, based on the numbers I've got. We've just got them in, of course, Carson. But uh, uh, I think it's still the underlying issue, though, is exactly uh, how many people are being fully employed in the marketplace as well. Uh, the, the numbers often speak to new jobs being created, but the reality is there's still a lot of people that are only partly employed, underutilised, basically. Let's bring in also my guests in the, in the studio, if I can, now here in Sydney. Um, Simon Bolton um, from Aqualis Consulting as well, and Jason Johnson um, from the AESC. Um, are you really seeing from this that, of course, we're running it at perhaps uh, too good, good a trend for our own good? It, it's rather bizarre to be talking about that, but the money markets were probably there saying, would they not, that it, because it's a strong number, there's more chance that the Reserve will be worried a bit about the inflationary impact of this. Are you either of you seeing kind of wage demands amidst strong jobs growth? Are we seeing the two moving together? I've certainly seen uh, at this very much the senior end of the market, there has been some pent up demand around jobs, uh, mm. around wages growth. We're seeing that come to the market now and mm. I think that will play out particularly given we, I, I'd see unemployment moving, trending towards about 4.5% through 2011. And these figures suggest that we're on that path and well on that path, mm. which will throw us back to the uh, acute labour shortages that we saw in uh, the pre-GFC uh, period of 2007. So my sense is that um, wages growth is going to be a, a factor over the course of the next 12 and 18 months. To stick to that unemployment number, and Simon, to get it uh, just nudging lower, if not staying static. We have to be creating 20,000 uh, new jobs a month. Otherwise, that unemployment rate will rise. Is that fair? Yeah. Um, difficult one to absolutely confirm. I think that there are jobs that have been created that are replacement jobs for roles that were made redundant through the tougher times. So it's, it's an interesting balance. You mentioned inflation there. I think there's always that double-edged sort of employment rising, but with that inflation rising, interest rates rising. So it's almost like a mixed blessing. Well, OK, back to Perth if we can. Uh, Peter Gleeson from the, the Chandler McLeod Group. Of course, you're in a state, Peter, where you're in a state of flux when it comes to just knowing whether projects are going to proceed or not. Uh, this number today, I guess you'll be waiting to see regionally how things are stacking up in uh, that, that key mining state. Yeah, it's a very interesting scenario because the reality is there's absolutely no shortage of jobs, frankly, uh, and there's actually no shortage of candidates, but unfortunately the matrix don't match. In other words, there's a lot of people that are looking for positions, uh, and in fact a lot of people now returning to Western Australia, we're finding, with, with the hope of uh, you know, taking the skill sets they've had to take east in order to get a job during the downturn, they're returning. But the reality is we're still in a situation where employers are expecting they'll get a much higher skill set for a lower price, if that makes sense, a lower cost 
cost of employment and uh, candidates have got the expectation that things have improved so much that they should be able to command a better uh, market rate, if you like, uh, for their services. So uh, uh, it's a very interesting scenario. It's quite confused at the moment and, and of course, recent times with the uh, discussions around the impending tax has only put it more in uh, sort of, it's, it's less certain again. Now, you all know that uh, any economist will say don't read too much into one month's figures, right? Now, well, we've got on this basis uh, the, the consensus, perhaps hours worked in the economy is, is a more stable measure. We're seeing today a rise of almost 3% in that department. Is that enough to signal from past months that perhaps uh, there is discernible uh, new work coming online that employers are offering? Carson, I, the, one of the indicators... Yeah. Um, the AESC, it's a global organisation representing the peak body of executive search firms. We released some data last week that 76% of executive search firms globally are anticipating an increase in revenue and an increase in new mandates through the course of this year. Mm. The search industry is often a leading indicator of broader, the broader jobs market, so I would suggest what sits behind these numbers is some further confidence coming into the broader market right. um, and probably a lag of about six months before we see a significant upsurge in, in uh, in the jobs. Uh, Simon, well, just to follow yeah. on for that, because if you look at hours worked and, and, and then put alongside participation rate, fewer people are now actively seeking work than they were last month. Does that not tell you that people are giving up? It's um, some measure? There are a couple of things happening, Carson. Yeah. I think people are receiving pay rises now. So you mentioned inflation of um, yeah. salaries. I think that's definitely happening for a couple of reasons. It's competitive. People are in short, short supply already. So incentive packages are being given yeah. to employees to retain them. I think secondly, it's a case of the market is becoming more competitive. So candidates are recognising that it's still risky moving jobs. But at the same time, we're seeing 22% of people in the job market are willing to leave a full-time job without actually having another job to go to. So I think that that strength in the market is um, reflected in candidates' so behaviour. You know, when you talk about the, those higher wages, and, and maybe as well, Peter, to you, get your view on this one, because we've seen in, in latest job ads that there are fewer uh, contract roles, fewer part-time positions being offered up, as if to say, well, employers would rather lock their staff in at perhaps a, a less competitive rate than that you'd get as a contractor, as more of a kind of, well, breathe easy over the longer term point of view. Not be, yeah, not be buffeted by unknown wage demands. Yeah, I, I think the uh, the interesting thing about the salary side is that a lot of companies are in de indeed having to provide additional uh, or salary increases to retain staff, um, let alone attract staff. Uh, and the other point, if I could just quickly uh, shoot back for one second uh, to the, the Carson to the uh, point about extra hours worked, I think the point is that uh, that comes back again to the fact that there are a lot of people in the marketplace who are underemployed, they're underutilised, and uh, so it's not necessarily because there's more hours worked, there's not necessarily more jobs created. It's just that people who are in the workforce are getting more work to actually, you know, bu right. buffer up their work, their right. working week. And you might well say employers are getting their pound of flesh and all that as a result. Absolutely. Let's, Absolutely. let's get the view on the money markets and I appreciate that uh, view, that instant view from Perth Peter, but I just want to quickly jump in to see and get some analysis on the Australian dollar. You saw the spike and who better than to comment than Tony Morris from ANZ standing by in Sydney. Tony, well it does seem as if money markets now swinging in and buying up uh, the possibility that the reserve might jump sooner than later and tighten. Maybe a little bit premature with the uncertainty going on offshore. So the Aussie getting some support earlier today on the back of that slightly upbeat uh, uh, commentary from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. But one sort of key feature of this data today is just the amount of momentum that's apparent in this data, not just the unemployment rate falling, hours work rising, and it's in this full-time sector. Maybe a little bit premature to expect a move on rates next month. We think that they're going to be focusing much more on the CPI data. So with pencil in August is probably the first place to look for that. Remember, the Reserve Bank Governor yesterday is highlighting the caution in consumer. This, the backdrop here, of course, is that this is going to be an enormous benefit to the household sector. But we pencil it in down the road. They've done quite a lot, three in a row. We think that's just on hold for the time being. All right, the biggest takeout for you then from today's numbers, people were telling me earlier that it was the hours worked to look at with greatest interest, less noise than that. Do you agree? 
Uh, there's a whole range of positive. I think uh, the full time continuing to rise, that will feed through. But the hours work. That, that hasn't caught up. It's one of the reasons why we thought the numbers today might show more consolidation is that we've seen a big rise in employment, but without a big rise in hours work. But we're now starting to, to see that as well as still strong uh, labour market growth. So very positive. Uh, overall momentum still very strong. And you'd say though Reserve Bank just would temper it and say, OK, it's one bit of data that's positive, but we want to see CPI in lockstep as well. Certainly, we had three in a row in terms of uh, their rate rises. They've they've got the luxury there uh, to wait and see, and which is what you're not seeing, I suppose, in Canada and New Zealand. That's why they've been uh, raising interest rates in this sort of environment. But I think you're right to point to the, the wages numbers, how this feeds through. 